A lot of the food that ends up on your dinner table is grown and raised right here in the U.S., but a sizable portion is coming from other countries. Well, tonight, the News 4 Investigates team examines imported food. Who's inspecting it? What's being rejected? Investigative reporter Luke Moretti continues our month-long special report, Your Food, What Do You Really Know? Imports now make up 17% of all food eaten in the United States, but at best only 2% of it is inspected. That means nearly all of the food imported into this country is physically untouched by inspectors before you buy it. That raises the question, are you and your family at risk? U.S. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand is a member of the Agriculture Committee and has a front row seat on the federal government's food inspection system. It's too low and we should be inspecting much more and what the FDA will tell you is we need more resources and so when we go to Congress and we say you need to make this a priority, what we're finding is deaf ears. The Food and Drug Administration's less than 500 inspectors are no match for the exploding volume of food entering through all U.S. ports, including the Buffalo-Canada border. Even at the 2% inspection level, tons of food is being intercepted that could have made people sick. This year through August, inspectors refused over 3,000 food products, farm-raised tilapia from China, contaminated by salmonella, a poisonous and deleterious substance, packaged rice from India, a filthy, putrid, or decomposed substance, unfit for food, mango from Mexico, containing a pesticide chemical, which is unsafe. A News 4 investigates data analysis of rejected imported foods since 2002 shows a range of safety risks. Most of the nearly 124,000 rejections were due to adulteration, foods found to contain filth, insects, illegal pesticides, or contaminated by bacteria like salmonella or botulism. Vegetables, fruits, and seafood had the most violations. The inspections are not random. Inspectors use intelligence so they can target foods or companies likely to have problems. Food and Water Watch, a consumer advocate group, has this warning. The U.S. government's safety net for imported food is not strong enough. And so it's one of the reasons we work so hard on country of origin labeling is at the bare minimum that's self-defense for consumers. They can decide for themselves. As you've probably noticed while grocery shopping, country of origin labels are only required on fresh and frozen fruits and vegetables, all meats, seafood, some nuts, and ginseng. Processed foods are excluded. It's not going to be a chicken nugget that's super processed or a can of vegetable soup that's processed. The FDA does not handle meats and poultry. That falls to the U.S. Department of Agriculture. Some experts say a new law will require more accountability from importers regulated by the FDA. Robert Gravani is a food science professor at Cornell University. There's a major concern, and we really need to address that. We have been addressing it, but we need to ramp that up and, and do an even better job. But a continuing worry is that some countries have lower food production standards than the United States. Food security is a national security issue. And if we can't produce our own food locally all across the country, then our food source could be put at risk. Now, according to the FDA, the agency targets products that pose the greatest risk, what it calls the best targets for physical examination or lab testing. But a former director of FDA's import operations tells us the agency needs a radical change. And you're going to hear from him coming up tomorrow at 6. Luke Moretti, News 4. And we have a lot more information about this on WIVB.com. You can even see what items have been refused and what country they were coming from and why. Just click on the Your Food tab on our homepage.